Rebuilding a model steam plant, part 11. The flywheel on the Stuart No. 10V steam engine is not running concentrically. There are two reasons for this. The flywheel bosses are not machined externally and the fixing bolt moves the flywheel when tightened. The crankshaft is definitely not bent. It's only a couple of weeks ago since I painted this flywheel, so with a bit of luck, the paint that I put on it should come off just as easily as it went on. Below the flywheel is a food container. This is a polythene food container, and that's very important. If you use a polystyrene container and fill it with cellulose thinners, the cellulose thinners will dissolve the polystyrene. I'm currently working in my second workshop, which is built onto the house. That's why I'm using a food container. Once I've filled it with cellulose thinners, I can put a lid on the container to keep all the fumes inside it. I've still got a really bad cold, and I can't smell it anyway, but that's not the point. It's dangerous stuff, and you don't want to be breathing it in. I sealed the container and left it on the bench overnight. And the next day, the flywheel looked like this. Most of the paint's just fallen off it. With a bit of help from an old toothbrush, the paint soon disappeared entirely. If you're going to buy a toothbrush to use in a cellulose thinners bath, don't buy one of these, because the cellulose thinners is attacking the handle. Try and buy a toothbrush with a polythene handle that will be impervious to the solvent. In no time at all, the flywheel is back to its initial nakedness. So here's the problem. The flywheel is not balanced. When I just place it on the worktop, which is level, it rolls back and forth and eventually settles with the heaviest point at the bottom. If turning the centre bosses is a success, I will use a needle file to reshape the inner part of the flywheel and make it balance. But I'll only need to do that once I've finished machining the other bits. I did think about using this. It's a model aeroplane propeller balancer. I may use this at a later stage, but I can't at the moment because I do not have a piece of steel of 7 seconds of an inch diameter to fit in this hole. Here's the problem. The hole in the centre of the flywheel and the outer rim of the flywheel are great. No problems at all. But whoever machined this didn't machine the casting around the hole, so when it's spinning, it looks like it's really off-centre. I'm taking no chances on this one. I've bought another brand new casting from Stuart Models, and it's really rough. I once mentioned this to Andy, who works at Stuart Models, and he says, well, we can't win. Some customers like the parts to be rough so they can clean them up as part of the job. When working with castings, you always have to be wary of blowholes, and I'm just checking with the scriber to see whether this is a sand-filled blowhole or just a mark in the casting. As you can see in this clip, using my trusty bandsaw, I cut off quite a lot of the mess on the flywheel. And now it's into the outer part of the workshop to use my belt sander. As you can see, I've fitted a new belt and it's cutting very well. When you're doing a job like this, you have to be really careful. I only want to clean up the outside edge to a limited extent. And it's really important to control this part because the belt sander wants to do nasty things to it. I'm being very firm and holding it in position. The good news is, the mark that I showed you in a previous clip is not a blowhole, and it's disappeared entirely now. One problem I have with flywheels is that you have to do quite a lot of work on them before you start the machining process, because this inner part of the flywheel can't be machined, or at least it can't with the equipment I'll be using. A half round needle file is the answer. It will remove just about everything I want it to remove, but because it's a very fine file, it takes a while for this to happen. Doing this job is sort of therapeutic in a very odd kind of a way. You just have to be careful not to stick the point of the needle file into your hand. This video is not about making the new flywheel. In this video, I just wanted to show that I had a new flywheel just in case my modification of the existing flywheel should go wrong. I'll do the rest of the fettling on this flywheel before I show how I machine it. I'm now in my other workshop and I'm using my Boxford lathe to turn a mandrel. And yes, I'm using a piece of brass, it should be steel, but this will be fine, it's only a very small part. 
And don't forget, I only intend to turn the bosses on the flywheel, not the outer edge, so this will be perfectly OK. In this part of the clip, the brass mandrel is almost the correct size. In fact, it's so close, I'm finishing it off with some wet or dry sandpaper. I want this mandrel to be a tight push fit in the flywheel, and I shouldn't have to use any Loctite 603. The flywheel is too tight on the mandrel for me to push it in place by hand, so instead I use the tailstock chuck. In this next clip, you will clearly see what the problem is. With the flywheel pushed firmly onto the mandrel, I spin it in the lathe, and just look how off-centre this centre boss is. But the good news is, the outer diameter of the flywheel is spinning true. All I really need to do is machine the bosses at both sides. And that will take place in the next episode of this series. And that's it for now. I'm back to working on my computer in the studio. And at the moment, I must confess, I'm not too impressed with Windows 11. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.